All right, here we are, the Super League Finals. It all comes down to this. On the top screen, you have Corey, who just comes back, came back from two top eights in the SCG 10Ks with Racto Scam, and you have Javier Dominguez, Pro Tour All Star, um, who is on the play with the Thoughtsies to break up Corey's. Well, I guess can't break up Corey's turn one scam since Corey has two red cards, two black cards, and two not dead after alls. Yeah, but importantly, he could break the grief right scam, which is the more threatening thing here. As uh, I have to imagine, Javier is gonna be happy to see a turn one fury from Corey with his own fury ready to answer it. I I agree, and so now Corey has an interesting decision whether or not to cast thought seize to try to protect the fury or to just just to just jam. Yeah, you could still just jam, right? Because it is reasonable for Javier to Fotsis away the grief because that's still like the best thing, the, the best opening. But yet ha Javier had no option to take Curry off the second best uh, opening. But we're going to see if maybe the prospect of going a little bit uh, slower with the Fotsis, clearing the way first and then striking with the Fury later is going to be attractive for Curry. I think that's yeah. what I would intuitively lean towards. I and think so, so too. I, I think I'd also intuitively lead towards just jamming the Fury into play. That being said, it is kind of attractive to maybe thoughts these this turn so that next turn, if you draw a land, you can hold up Not Dead After All to protect your Fury from an opposing removal spell. Yeah, that would be excellent. So we see the Thoughtseize, which makes perfect sense then. What, what do you think that Corey will take from Javier's hand here? Not obvious to to me. Taking grief, I guess, makes sense because you want to protect your own fury. So, uh, as you said, the plan is to idly draw a land, which is going to be really effective. That is not a land. So, with the way Cory fought sees, there is no way to deploy the fury right now. So, probably just going to pass and wait. Yeah, I, I love how Evier plays the Blood Crypt tap, just knowing for sure there's no way we're going to cast the Orcish Bowmaster into the to the known scammed Fury hand. Yeah, that was actually pretty pretty interesting. And like, you know, just straight up playing the Blood Crypt tap, like he knew he wants to play it tapped. He, he knew he's keeping those bow, bow masters for later. Typically, you don't want to be the person to play bow, bow masters or, you know, you don't want to be the person that plays the first bow master to pink face. You just want to always get value from it. Yeah, absolutely. Possible. And Ragavan is stealing the swamp from the top of Corey's library. Let's see if the next card is any left. No, just another, just another fable of the mirror breaker. Corey is still really, really handcuffed. Yeah, the one lander doesn't didn't pan out too well for Corey so far. And Ragavan was an excellent draw for Javier because now Javier is going to be able to dash yet another time, amass another treasure and that just leaves him with five mana, so those Furies are hard castable at that point, and it would be pretty hard from for Corey to regain his position here. Probably won't come up this game, but it's kind of funny that Javier gets the the Blood Crypt tapped, so that theoretically Corey's Blood Moons could <laughs> cut him off black on the line. That is true, but also. If I'm not mistaken, Javier was the one bringing the moons in. Oh, sorry. Cody, yeah. Cody wasn't, so. <laughs> yeah, the intricacy of this game here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well played, well played. <laughs> All right. We don't even get to see the draw step for Cody right now. It's a mystery card. I think that and if it was a land, good. it would have been, like, snapped into play. Hey, Ragavan. All right, that's gonna probably get shot down by those bowmasters. I would think so too. Seems about appropriate, you know. If if Cory draws a land next turn, you know, it's it's a bit of a problem of course with the uh with the protection here, but I, I think you'll get enough value out of your bowmasters despite it dying to the scammed fury. You you even kind uh, of maybe want uh Cory to like scam fury onto the bowmasters without the second land so so you can fury uh his fury. That does sound plausible. And Grief is also an excellent draw. It's a little bit scary because, you know, you see that Cory never drew 
a land, so obviously he drew spells. And it's been plausible for him to draw maybe an extra copy of Fury. So you play play your grief, you kind of expose yourself to the second copy of Fury, but it's going to be excellent in this actual situation if Javier goes for it because there is just one Fury to take. Yeah, and then also if you if, if you want to play around second Fury, using both treasures here will cut you off from hardcasting the first Fury of your own to retort here. That is true. So we'll see if the Thoughtseize bug is alive and well on Magic Online. Seems like Javier already exiled one Fury at the top hmm. of Cody's deck, so... Not today. Not today. The, Is it a uh, Fossey's bug bug when when it doesn't <laughs> happen? Yeah, we need to we need to patch it back in. Yeah, so Corey, you know, maybe in an ideal world would like to cast this Orcish Bowmaster end of turn so it could fade um Javier's Fury. Although I I guess if, if Javier ends up dashing the Ragavan. That won't be so much of a concern. I, I think this this bowmaster is no, is known information from the grief last turn and the thought sees. So I guess okay, just we'll just sandbag the ragavan, getting in for five. Yeah, I also believe it was known. So we see bowmaster gonna shoot down bowmaster. All right, and probably trade armies. I have to assume maybe double block the grief. I guess if you expect the fury to happen, which also is known information because it's been revealed from a discard spell way earlier. Yeah, I think that that makes sense. And then if you're heavy, already, I, jamming the fury seems pretty straightforward here. Opponents at six life, fury attacks for six. Gotta get him dead. It does seem to line up nicely. Yeah. And you know what can Cory draw now? The answer is obvious. It's a Fury. Hmm. Grief a little bit too too late for that, I believe. Yeah, if 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 Cory's if one of these not dead after all so was an undying evil, we could maybe see Grief take the two cards in Javier's hand and then jump block the Fury. But um, Cory is in fact dead after all. You could even charm block and then cast your not dead after all on the on the grief, but as you said, that remains in the sphere of uh, things Cory wishes would happen and not not the actual game state that we are observing. Okay, so relatively fast game one. We are nearly to the end of the Super League, and what a ride it's been. Um, as far as I remember, I don't think there was anything super interesting as far as cyborg dynamics go. Do you, do you think there's anything I missed? Do you think there's any uh, interesting angles of attack from either player? Javier is going to be excited to get rid of his Blood Moons, and then maybe they're going to think about Blood Moons, not Blood Moons, Ley Lines, Shield Reds. Ragavan is probably a pretty, pretty easy cut, but yeah, not I... always. If you're on the play, then it's... Uh, Always pretty tempting to just have Ragavan. I think you missed this, but I was talking to Corey earlier when we were commentating together, and he said he was not going to bring in Leyline of the Void in the Mirror, mm -hmm. which I thought was very interesting. Um, and I, I I didn't exactly follow the logic of it, but I'm interested to see how that pans out for him. Oh, I, I can sympathize with that. You know, after all, it's like two red black decks that are just full of mid rangey cards. So, uh, the game just can go turn into like a top deck war pretty easily. So later on the void famously pretty bad in those situations. So I can understand not wanting to do that. I wonder if, you know, small things like the presence of Croxa and Co I, be I believe it is Cody's deck uh, changes that a little bit. Maybe you want the ley line if there is Croxa present. Maybe you don't care as much if there is no Croxa. I think that makes sense. Say. It looks like they both have one copy of Kroxa. All right. Um, and then here we see both players have Grief and a Scam card and a Black card in their hand. And unfortunately for Javier, only one only of the Only one player gets, gets to be on the play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, 
Ooh, and Javier Sainz is going to be much worse after his grief is gone, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, a lot of hands are worse after getting double griefed, but Cor- <laughs> like, Javier's hand is especially bad, being a one land triple three drop hand. I think that you'll be able to maybe just take the grief and the thought sees. Um, although I guess that that does, you know, essentially let Javier top deck an incarnation and get right back in it. Yeah, I would be tempted to just take note that after all to leave Javier without an easy way out of this situation because you know if we, if we see him top deck a fury or a grief right now he's right back in the game <laughs> and, and molten collapse is drawn which is kind of funny to me here since uh it does have two targets here on turn two the wicked roll token and the grief although killing a wicked roll token is not the most uh effective plan unfortunately since you still take the one damage unfortunately Corey's gonna create a treasure token so Oh, there and two targets in play for the destroy <laughs> target non-land permanent mana value one or less. Yeah, but I think it takes away a little bit from from how funny the situation was. So <laughs> yeah, a little bit unfortunate here. Yeah, I think if if Javier is able to top deck a land, we're gonna have a, a top deck battle on our hands. If not, it's gonna be kind of close. And there's the land off the top. Grief no, is dead after no all. No descend though. No descend, sadly. Treasure token remains alive and well. All right, so this Ragavan is going to be a little bit of an issue for Javier, but we could draw a Fury. We could draw probably still a Grief is fine. We could draw a land. We could yeah. draw... Orcish Bowmaster. So there's plenty of draws for Javier that makes sense. Swamp. Yeah, Swamp is perfectly fine. Do you think that you might uh, hold up Colgan's command here, or would you play the Fable of the Mirror Breaker and just try to trade the Shaman for the Ragavan? It's interesting. I don't know which one of those lines uh, is better. They seem fairly close in value to me, but uh, Colgan's command is the one that Javier opts to go with yeah I, th- I think i like that with the not dead after all in your hand you could maybe set up to scam grief next turn and uh if if you if you read that Corey's like sandbagging a couple of removal spells that could be kind of nice that would match up well against furies and Corey's hand exactly so yeah probably a good call let's see it cory could get really aggressive here and dash ragavan and cast orcish bow masters and get Javier down to one, or at least that's what he think. If if he thinks that, uh, I guess I guess is the is the Colgan's command known info? It is known info. Never mind. It is a lot of damage though. Still for for Javier to take. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna Colgan's command, and we're gonna choose the target player discards a card mode, which gets pretty heavily punished by. The flash ability on Orcs Bowmasters. Yeah, I think more or less that's the only card you really. I guess you could get punished by a, a uh, undying effect too. And so, assuming that the board doesn't change at all, or there's not a relevant card from Javier next turn, he should be dead on board with just uh, being attacked by everything here. Has to, has to trade the token for the token, and then just playing a Fable of the Mirror Breaker or removal spell next turn is not enough to stop. Both bowmasters. You see Javier un- unblocking the army briefly. He probably just really wants to take the value block, but he can't because he's gonna die if he does that. So I, I imagine that. Well, is is there any merit here for taking not dead after all over fable or terminate? Since Javier's best draw by a lot is fury, and terminate and fable are kind of the same card here. Yeah, I could see that. Well, we see double loot from Fable. We see the Fury, but that is, yeah. you know, too late for Orcish Master shots. And we're going to be moving to game three after this, uh, I guess, kind of Boromir incident for from Javier. And then I, I see Javier moving the ley lines in on the draw. Also, did not bring in ley lines on the play. Very interesting. 
I, I it, it's very cool to see that like I think the vast majority of scam players in the leagues and in challenges even will a- almost always just no brainer bring in the ley line of the void. I think that that's somewhat standard, and it's very cool to see two very high level players, best caliber out there. Both of them think that uh, you don't want to have access to ley line of the void on the play. Yeah, it makes sense to have it on a draw. It's it's better there, right? It's like the only way to stop the turn one grief if your opponent is the one starting the game. So I like that. And it seems to be paying off uh, for Corey on the draw here. Or is Corey, Corey's on the draw? Yeah, Corey's on the draw. Has the ley line of the void. Is able to stop a turn one scam, but it is not actually over there for Javier. He just has the modern's old best turn one play, Ragavan. Yeah, and Ragavan on the play will have some time to hit uh, Cody before Orkish Pomasers gets uh, gets rid of it. So you have an interesting decision point from Cory here. You could thought seize Javier and then plan to use the Bowmaster to kill the Ragavan next turn. Don't really even need to worry about uh, Corey protecting it with an undying effect uh, because you have your own ley line, but it, it is always a little bit scary to get hit by Ragavan. It is scary, you know. Ragavan could hit, let's say, a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, a Orcish Bow Masters, even like a Dolphy Voidwalker. All really scary cards to you. You have to face like that, so. Yeah, and that I, Corey decides better to bolt the Ragavan. Um, and because there's a ley line of the void in play, you can just wait until after the Ragavan attacks. That way a dashed Ragavan is not going to hit you this turn. Mm-hmm. It also makes it so that you don't need to proactively deploy your Bowmasters to deal with the Ragavan. So you you aren't the first person to play Bowmasters, which, again, you don't want to be... And very heads up play here from from Corey deciding better to hold up Bowmasters to play around Javier's Bowmasters. Obviously, makes a lot of sense to think that. Oh, it changes his mind. <laughs> not not the very heads up anymore. Decides to make Javier play the Bowmasters with the Thoughtseize. but Javier one step ahead doesn't play the Bowmasters. <laughs> you know, I, I I guess I guess there are thought there are Ragavans in, in on the play here. From, from Javier, but almost feels like you should just board out Bowmasters <laughs> in the mirror. You just never end up uh, casting the card. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, <guess. laughs> I, don't I don't I don't know. I, I, maybe just a little bit of uh, scam mirror madness. I mean, you're, you're not casting them because of Bowmasters, right? So, right. Well, I guess, yeah, following that logic, you could reach the conclusion you just did. You just reached the uh, yeah, you're probably right. Be interesting, or or not that interesting. <laughs> All right, so another hypothesis for Cory, and it's gonna see the same removal spells and not dead after all again. And multi collapse confirmed worse here, as Cory decides to take terminate instead. <laughs> Confirmed worse. Yeah, that's a good point. And it, it is, is definitely worse here since the Terminate could kill the Grief in response to the trigger. Multi Collapse could not do so. Yeah, it's actually a pretty big deal. The Grief is just going to stick. Bowmaster is going to shoot Bowmasters. Leyline is successfully trading for a card in Javier's hand. All, all around solid. swamp so Takanuma can get a little bit of value later in the game and Corey is now in commanding position here in the very last game of the modern super league yeah unfortunately for Javier no five mana just yet so drawing a fury which normally would be the way to turn the tides of a game like this not immediately available and ooh not dead after all not so good yeah, for all the 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 grief that we give uh, <laughs> scam players for how you know frustrating the deck can be to play against, their deck can top deck quite poorly. Having all of these 
undying effects in your deck having all these discard spells decks hands cards in your deck means if you're on the back foot it, it can be very difficult to stabilize sometimes exactly all right blood crypt that's actually not that bad of a top deck because that's the crucial fifth mana that uh, we mentioned a minute ago yeah and if you're gonna draw land and fury you kind of want to draw the land first so the fury is never exposed to a grief or a thought seize from Corey's side exactly interesting decision on Corey's uh, end here he could use takenuma to try to find a creature and top three cards but if he messes then he just discarded the card for no reason so yeah i i think i would probably be inclined to just try to hit here you you have javier on the back foot just any amount of pressure extra is is pretty valuable and then he Duffy, does hit. he has both a void and, fury. and a fury two solid cards you probably take the fury as it is a devil striker with more points of power Gives you a great revenge play versus the fury that Javier has to top deck, or maybe you just deploy it proactively and then you get to attack and force a trade on the fury if Javier ends up joining it. So let's see, Orkish Bow Masters. It's 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 pretty good. Yeah, it's yeah. If, I think it's maybe like the next best draw after Fury here. It lets you. Either kill the bowmaster, trade for the grief, and then just go to one, or kill the kill kill a bowmaster, chump block the fury, and take four down to, um, down to three, mm -hmm. or sorry, three down to four. Training for the grief seems pretty attractive. You do get probably more live top decks if you do that. So seems like. All right, yeah, it seems like Javier decides uh, that that is the way he wants to play. All right, makes sense. All right, so now Terminate, Mind Collapse, other copies of Bowmaster. Fable the Mirror Breaker also a nice Fable topic. Be, it would be point. great, yeah. Grief. All right, three mana or four mana chump blocker. Corey has, you know, ton, tons and m most of the spells in Corey's deck, <laughs> I think, win the game. Ragavan, Orcish Bowmaster, Fury, I guess maybe not the majority, but a huge, huge chunk. But Rocky if Javier could just top deck Fury here, Corey casting that Thoughtseize put him down to six life, means like Javier is still just a top deck Fury away from winning the modern Super League. Yes, exactly. Pretty tense. Pretty tense finals could go any any direction. Could change at any minute. And another one. One more land. All right. Is Javier going to retaliate with a third Fury top deck? Uh, excuse me, not Fury. Grief top deck. Or is he going to draw a Fury? Oh. Ooh, a Black Cliff Cliffs finally for Javier. And that means that. Cory gets crowned as the winner of the modern Super League 